Hi, my name is Josh Cohen Collier, and I'm a member of the technical support team here at Clipfolio. Today, I'm going to talk about how to select specific nodes in your JSON or XML data sources. Let's get started now. To change which data we're looking at our data source, we use something called XPath. This is basically a pointer to what exactly in the data source we want to use in our formulas. To see what this would look like, all you need to do is click on one of the nodes in your formula. So let's take a look at one of our sample data sources here. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to click on the reservations slash table node. See how in my formula bar, the part in blue describes where in my data source I'm actually looking. In this case, I'm looking through all table values in each of the reservation objects. To change what I want to point to in the data source, simply click on the blue part in the formula bar, then wherever you wish to inside of the data at the bottom. For example, let's do the name node instead. This also changes the XPath in our formula bar. XPath is extremely powerful and can be modified to get very specific information from your data in a much more dynamic way than in cellular-based data. There are some times when what you get by clicking on the data source is not specific enough. For example, if I were to look at the reservation section, I can see that there are five reservations, and I can open them up here. If I click on the time node, what this gives me is the time value for all of the reservations, which might be what I want. However, maybe what I want instead is the time for just this particular reservation only, and not all of them. There's no way to differentiate between this just by clicking, so we need to take a different route, which is modifying the XPath. The first option we have for modifying the XPath is using our selection options. These are pre-built XPaths built into Clipfolio to look at different kinds of information and can be much more specific than the information you get by just clicking. You will find your selection options inside of the data itself in the bottom panel. If you can't see them, like when you are outside of that particular node, you can find them by clicking on the blue XPath inside of the formula bar. This will make it appear in the bottom panel again. Let's just do a quick example of that. So if I click outside of my XPath, I can get my selection options again by just clicking on the blue XPath inside of my formula, and you'll notice that it pops up again in the bottom. Now that I have it, let's actually take a look at what it can do for us. For the time element, my selection options are to get only that specific time, all times for all reservations, and times in the entire data source, or all times in that one reservation. The selection options might be different depending on what I have clicked on, as different combinations of nested objects and arrays have different possibilities. You can also see a little preview underneath of what the data would look like if you were to choose this option. Let's just click on the option we want to use in this case, which is the first one. Now if we look in our table, we'll see that instead of having all of the times being shown, we are now displaying only the time that we selected, which is 11 o'clock. Let's try another example with our selection methods, using the name element instead. So I'm going to click on reservation slash name. And if I do that, we can see that it's showing the name of the three people who left their name for reservations. However, if you take a look at the very top element, you'll notice that there is another name, which corresponds with the name of the restaurant. Let's say that for some reason, you also wanted to get this name and not just the ones in the reservations. You can use the selection options to get all names instead of just the ones you clicked on. Now we can see that we're now showing the first name, which is the name of the restaurant, as well. Selection options are great for beginners, however there are some occasions when you can't use them. This is either because what you needed is too specific, such as getting data with conditions, or other examples. An example situation would be if I wanted to get all of the names for reservations that had more than one table. Another possibility is that sometimes due to the structure of the data, the selection options might not work at all. This happens with nested arrays inside of arrays, and other data sources with unusual data structures that we are not capable of dealing with using the default options. In this case, what you will need to do is actually write the XPath yourself. XPath is actually its own language, separate and outside from Clipfolio. So if you ever are looking for something specific, there's some great online resources to help teach you. In addition, the Advanced 500 series webinar covers some more advanced XPath notation in detail. Thanks for tuning into this lesson and I hope you guys learned something. If you have any more questions, feel free to reach out to us at support.clipfolio.com or also tune in to one of our 400 or 500 series webinars.